Hi, I'm lesbian fiction author Claire Lydon and today I'm going to be reading to you from my second novel, The Long Weekend, which is about a group of friends who go to Devon on a long weekend and um, there's a lot of drama that ensues. So um, it's available from Amazon, Kobo, iTunes, Barnes & Noble and all good bookstores. So I'm going to be reading to you from chapter one and this is on Thursday evening on the drive down to Devon and we're introduced to Vic and Stevie. The purple fiesta hit another pothole where there should have been solid ground and the car slumped to the left like a well-rehearsed drunk. Vic's nausea rose. However, as she was the one who'd made the call to drive down this particular road slash dirt track, she didn't think Stevie would appreciate her sharing the fact that she might vomit at any minute. Stevie tugged on the black handbrake, her fingers fitting neatly into its ridges. It made a crunching sound, which fairly reflected the mood in the car. I'm not even going to ask if this is the right road, seeing as it's not even a road. Stevie surveyed her surroundings. I'm guessing we should have turned right at that last junction. Her voice didn't hold the acute anger Vic had been fearing. Rather, Stevie's lips curled into a weak smile. It's the way it said on the map. Vic wiped her palm across her clammy brow. Perhaps if he hadn't been eating a flake without trying to spill it all over the car, he'd been paying more attention to the map. Stevie sighed, then blew a raspberry. She rolled her neck in a semicircular motion from left to right. It rattled the whole way round, like an old rusty chain. Vic ran her hand through her short brown hair and took off her black glasses to wipe them on the hem of her shirt. Over five hours on the road had taken its toll on both of them. The clock on the dashboard read 16.34. She put her glasses back on, but she wasn't sure her vision was any clearer. What about the sat-nav? Stevie glanced sideways. The one that got us into this mess in the first place. Stevie stared straight ahead into the late Devon afternoon. There was not a single house or business in sight, just a few sheep in the neighbouring field. At least it's got a sexy voice, that sat-nav, she said. A sexy lying voice, Vic smiled. The tension in the air silently popped. We haven't seen a sign for miles, though, Stevie added. Devonians aren't big on signs, but they do make great cream teas. Great. If we ever get to where we're going, maybe we can have one, Stevie said. That's the spirit. Vic stroked Stevie's denim-clad thigh. Her wife's mu muscle tensed but she ignored it. Instead, Vic flicked on the top light and surveyed the Collins UK road atlas in her lap. After a few moments, she looked up, renewed certainty plastered on her face. I think I've got it, she said. If we get back onto that bit that was the actual road, we should hit the main road in like 10 minutes, 15 tops. And babe? Stevie turned her head slowly, her short blonde crop hardly moving as she did so. Her skin sagged with tiredness, her complexion the colour of rice pudding. She was too tired to respond. I'll buy you a beer when we get there. You fucking better, Stevie said. And you're pushing us out of this ditch if we're stuck too. Vic leant in and kissed Stevie briefly on the lips. She straightened up in the passenger seat, trying to ignore the fact that Stevie's body had just tensed again at her touch. Vic laid the map on her lap as the Fiesta's engine roared back into life. What's the ETA? Stevie asked, looking over her left shoulder and shifting the gears into reverse as the tension hastily began its reassembly. One hour tops. That's what you said last time, Stevie said. We will make it by Easter Sunday, right? Vic frowned at the sarcasm but said nothing. Any sex from any of the others yet? Are they on their way? Stevie asked. Vic reached into the door compartment and retrieved her phone. Nope, she said, shaking her head at her home screen, before carefully placing the phone back in its cover. Stevie pressed her foot down on the accelerator and looked behind her. They both heard the engine rev, but the car stayed still. Stevie pursed her lips and tried again. Same result. Vic screwed up her face as Stevie looked over at her. 
So, uh, you know that joke I made a few seconds ago? Vic let her, let her eyelids settle before taking a deep breath and opening her passenger door. I thought driving your car into ditches only happened in rom-coms, she said, before disappearing out of the car.